Today, we are going to talk about how to use Power Automate in Teams. In the left-hand navigation menu, go to Apps, and then search for Workflow. This will bring up the Workflow application, which you can add to your team. If it hasn't already been added to your environment, you will see the word Install versus the word Open. Once it's installed, you can go back to Apps, and then you will see Workflows at the bottom. There are many popular templates to help you quickly get started, even if you've never used Power Automate before. For example, I can send a message to OneNote, schedule a reply, or even automatically create a meeting from a chat. The other thing you can do is go to the more added apps, the three dots, and search for Power Automate. When you install this app into the left-hand navigation rail, you can then right-click on it and then pin it. This makes it much easier to find all of the workflows associated with Power Automate. And as you can see, we still have popular templates here below the flow section. Then you can click on see all templates and have the same categories that we saw in the workflow section earlier. In the toolbar at the top of the screen, there is a filter and it defaults to Microsoft Team templates. If you want, you can click the drop down and select all templates. For now, we're going to stick with Microsoft Team templates. Another option you have is to search for templates. So I know I want to do something with OneNote, but I may not know exactly where in the menu it is. By using the search feature, I have quickly found the template that I'm looking for. I'm going to click on Save a Message to OneNote, and I get a floating dialog box to help me set up my flow. Power Automate has given the flow a generic name, but you can change it to something more descriptive if you like. For example, I'm going to call this one Send FAQ to OneNote. And then the workflow will verify that you have access to the different connectors needed. In this case, it's Teams, OneNote, and Office 365 users. You see this green check mark, which means that I am signed in to a valid connection on all of them. As a quick tip, you can click the three dots to see what account you're signed into. If you're like me and you belong to multiple organizations, you might want to double check that you are signed into the correct one. Everything looks great here, so all I have to do is click Next. On this screen, click the first drop down box and you will see all of the notebooks that you have access to. This is why I gave the tip earlier of double checking which account you're logged into. If you don't see the correct notebooks here, it might be that you're logged into the wrong account. For this demonstration, I am going to select the work notes option. Now that Power Automate knows which notebook I want to send the message to, it's going to let me choose a section of the notebook. In this case, I want to send it to frequently asked questions. And then I will create the flow. When Power Automate is done setting up the flow, you will get this confirmation card letting you know that it was added successfully. The other thing that is nice is that you will get instructions on how to use the flow now that it has been set up. Let's go ahead and click done to dismiss this floating dialog box. And now it's time to test it. I am going to navigate to the Teams tab, and in my testing team, I'm going to enter a new conversation and create a sample message that I'm going to pretend needs to go to the FAQ section of my OneNote. What we've set up here is called an instant flow, which means we need to click a button to make it work. So when I hover over the message, I click on the three dots for more options and then select more actions. Now we have the send to FAQ OneNote button that we're going to click to trigger our flow. A floating dialog box will appear on the screen that lets you know that the workflow is running and it gives you the option to add a note for additional context that will also be sent to OneNote. Now I'm going to navigate to chat and Power Automate has sent me a message. If I click on view note, it's going to take me to my notebook. And as you can see, we are in fact in the working notes notebook, in the FAQ section, and the message has been added as a page to the FAQ section. 
The only thing I don't like about this workflow is that each message is added as an individual page, and that doesn't work as well for the way that I organize information. But there's no wrong or right answer here. It just depends on whether that works for you. I have navigated back to Teams, and I'm going to click on the Power Automate app in the left-hand navigation menu. This is where you can see all of the flows that you have created, turn them on or off, and even edit them. When I click on the name of the flow, it takes me to the Power Automate page that allows me to see the details, the run history, connections, owners, etc. This is the same thing you would see if you had gone to the Power Automate standalone app. This is where you would come and click on edit if you wanted to make any changes to the flow that you created using the template. So for example, when I set up this flow, I chose my working notes notebook, but my boss came back and said, nope, I wanted it to go to the testing team notes. So I can quickly come here, make that change, and then save the flow. Now that we've taken an in-depth look at one of the flows, let's quickly look at another option. One of my favorites is to use schedule a reply. All you have to do is verify you're connected to Teams and click create a flow. And just like before, we're going to get the confirmation message and all you have to do is click done to dismiss it. I'm going to navigate back to Teams. To test the flow, I'm going to reply to the important FAQ message I sent earlier. Hover over the message, go to the three dots and select more actions. From there, click on schedule a reply. A new floating dialog box will open where you can choose the date, time, and then type in your message. To me, this is exactly like using send message later in Outlook so that I can create the message now, but then send it later when everybody is at work rather than interrupting their weekend. So now that I have my message, I will click submit. If you're like me, you might be curious as to how you can cancel this reply before it is sent. If you go back to the home page in Power Automate, click on schedule a reply, you can go into the 28 day run history, choose the message that you sent, and here you can see that the flow is running and it's delaying until the date time parameter is met. I can click on cancel and then you'll get a tiny message at the top that says, are you sure you want to cancel the selected flow run? I'm going to click OK. And you will see that this flow has been canceled. So my message will not be sent on Monday morning at 7 a.m. Let's look at one last example flow that I find particularly useful. From the Power Automate tab, I'm going to select Create and then go to the Calendar Options. And here you see schedule a meeting from a message. Just like before, we're going to verify that we have access to the connectors, click next. And this time we can click the drop down to choose which calendar to save the event to. In most cases, you will see three options. Pick calendar, which is associated with your primary calendar, and then choose the drop down per time zone for the meeting. It so happens that I am in the Eastern Standard Time Zone, so I will search for that and select that option. And then click on Create Flow. I've navigated to a message from my coworker, Nestor, who would like to have some time to discuss the OneDrive class. I can go ahead and create a meeting directly from this message. I will hover over the message, select more options, select more actions, and click schedule a meeting. A dialog box opens where I will enter all of the information relevant to this meeting. This will be a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the message sender. So if you want to add anybody additional to the meeting invite, we will have to do that on the Teams calendar. So let's click submit to schedule this meeting and then we're going to navigate to the left-hand menu and choose the calendar option. And here you can see my 10 a.m. meeting with Nestor. If you double click on the meeting, you will open it up into edit mode 
and then add any additional names if necessary. As you can see, there are many templates and many options that you can use workflows for within Teams to allow you to quickly get started and save time by automating daily routine tasks. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.